Welcome everyone uh, to this panel event. Um, if we could please ask that you make sure that your microphone is on mute uh, unless you are speaking um, and this session will be recorded. Uh, so the hosts of this panel, uh, can sensibility and localism be the measure of our work? Uh, will be Monica Moisi, who is the founder of the Cultural Intellectual Property Rights Initiative and Cultural Sustainability Weaver at the Cultural Sustainability Academy, which is the Knowledge Hub for Cultural Sustainability. Uh, along with myself, my name is Nicole Crouch, and I am the Academic Research and Creative Industries Lead at CIPRI. So thank you all for joining us for this Cultural IP Month event. Uh, Cultural IP Month 2023 by the Cultural Intellectual Property Rights Initiative, or CIPRI for short, is a month-long celebration of the creativity, wisdom and innovation of Indigenous people, ethnic groups and local communities uh, and advocacy for uh, collective custodianship rights. The theme of this month is Cultural IP Rights are Human Rights. The purpose of Cultural IP Month is to generate a space for conversation, uh, be a catalyst for systems change and to advocate for new generation of rights that acknowledge Indigenous peoples, ethnic groups and local communities, self-determination and collective rights to protect their traditional knowledge and traditional cultural expressions, their government systems and worldviews. So Cultural IP Month 2023 is a labour of love. It is a gift um, to the international community of thinkers, creators, craft custodians, uh, and anyone with an open heart and soul to start a mind shift revolution. So I'll hand over to Monica. Thank you, Nicole. Um, so today under the topic, can sensibility and localism be the measure of our work? We'll be talking about the relationship between how we design, how we consume and coexist at the same time. This conversation is woven with the belief um, in the power of collaborative models to be catalysts for systems change. And in the first panel um, of the month, uh, we spoke about weaving threads of systems change. Uh, we come now towards the end of the Cultural IP Month 2023, looking at how can we continue weaving and um, discover new threads in the ecosystems that we operate in. What roles can community, regional knowledge and cultural symbolism play in creating products and processes that lead to changing mindsets? We're joined today by three amazing projects, um, two of them based in Romania and one in Georgia. Uh, I was lucky to, to meet two of these projects um, during a project uh, um, um, developed by the World Intellectual Property Organization in Geneva, um, a training um, uh, and mentoring uh, and matchmaking for um, indigenous and local community women entrepreneurs. Um, that's where I met um, um, the project Pesvebi and the project Nalba. Um, and together with, with Nalba, um, um, this idea of, of curating this panel came together and it's uh, through through them that we got to meet um, the project Redu um, uh, where and, and a new uh, addition let's say to our ecosystem on the occasion of the panelists um, after which we'll letting be letting them to speak more about themselves uh, we have with us um, Nino and Eleni uh, Bahutashvili um, from Pesvebi, a Georgian brand that creates traditional rugs and modern accessories through a cross-disciplinary approach that considers cultural heritage, cultural continuity, and art therapy. Uh, from Georgia, we'll be traveling to um, a French uh, a Romanian designer duo, Lavinia Gingashan and um, Capucin Robert, who are the co-founders of Nalba, a regenerational project that aims to connect the past, present, and future through handwoven wool rugs. Uh, and last but not least, um, we, we keep 
in the region of Romania um, and talk to Andrea Sofronia, Romanian designer and maker at Redu and My Bine, two initiatives that are part of an ecosystem that brings together um, and that brings brings in focus the local practices of repair and reuse, which were so common in the households of our childhood here in Romania. Okay, great. So, um, Nina, can you please tell us about um, uh, your your work and how you have created this project, starting from the community based craft of weaving traditional rugs? Yes. So let's start with um, uh, with the presentation. Um, in the family of industry uh, of Eastern Georgia, uh, woolen fabrics which were made at home were of great uh, importance. The local uh, lo location of Kizii and the climate created all, co all conditions for the development of sheep farming. Uh, this is what the development of uh, protection is related to. The existence of uh, continuous tradition of weaving in the territory of Kiziri is indicated by the rugs, hujinis, jejims, and etc., which have survived to this day and were made at the high level of um, craftsmanship. They were used uh, not only for living, but were also exported goods. Uh, Kezirian rugs with their uh, artistic value, performance technique, and uh, distinctive aesthetics are special and outstanding among the Caucasian rugs. There are carriers of important information in the colors of fabric, ornaments, and performance techniques. The ancient cultural tradition, lifestyle, uh, entrepreneurial habit, and the attitude to the world of the ethnic group that created them can be seen. It. Uh, in addition to the fact that the ethnic group that created them can be seen, um, uh, uh, cottage industry was a means of life food. It also had another important role. During the long winters, uh, women gathered <coughs> at the places and uh, uh, they shared their stories and it was uh, uh, their social socialization um, during the winter time <coughs> when they haven't had anything to do. The rocks preserved in the um, Nico Pirasmani State Museum became an inspiration uh, for Nino to start researching and resorting the Kizian rocks. Uh, today there are no more followers and performers of this uh, activity. But every third kid women uh, back in the past where the, uh, we were and uh, did uh, this activity and uh, quite enjoyed it. The Soviet period completely put an end to many branches of home industry, including homemaking. Women went to work in collective farms and therefore there were no time left for the development of this uh, craftsmanship. Uh, although really they are still continued at home, but uh, there were no more gathering places. Uh, these traditions are continued by uh, the Pesvebi workshop, which was established in 2006, first as an initiative group, but since 2011, Pesvebi LLC. Uh, work process is go ongoing in the workshop throughout the year. The founders uh, employ at eight people, artist designer, artist performers, a master of dyeing with natural dyes, management and art making directions are led by the founder, um, that is uh, Nino. Uh, taking into account the uh, historical uh, prescript, uh, the workshop Peswabi resorted and developed this field of cultural heritage. Our goal is to restore the tradition of Georgian folk crafts, promote them and turn them into a, a marketable product, Collective of, a collection of handmade works and their promotion, ensuring community, community and development of secrets, traditional technologies, adaptation of uh, uh, socio <coughs> society aligned to modern process in uh, social uh, cultural environment and uh, promotion of their em uh, employment, the involvement of the creative part and uh, the society of vulnerable population in its community activity. 
<clears throat> the tradition tra transition from the socialist economy to a free market economy turned out to be a rather difficult way of adapting to world processes. The reality we are facing is quite dramatic and requires full mobilization from us. It is necessary to determine the areas that actually have the economic potential to be included in the global economic processes of the world. Um, one such area that has this potential is the you know, commodification of decorative arts. Based on years of experience, we have created products uh, we have created uh, products adapted to modernity. Uh, the gap year of uh, 70 years stopped the development of this field and we had to think about how modern, uh, but at the same time, traditional uh, product could be adopted to modernity. That would allow us to produce other products besides large drugs, for example, Hujini. Uh, Hujini was uh, used uh, back in the you know, past uh, as a um, bag which were hung at the horse or donkeys uh, and they uh, put uh, things inside of it and they carried throughout the uh, long roads. But um, this um, uh, function is now uh, no more needed because of the car industries and everything in the modern society. So uh, another example is that um, women, when they were get, getting married, uh, they carried uh, all their stuff uh, in the huge bags um, and carried it to their husband's houses. Uh, and uh, the idea came that uh, we can create modern uh, bags um, using these techniques, um, which were quite popular back in the days. Uh, so Pesobi Workshop is the only um, uh, Georgia, uh, only in Georgia that uh, masters in uh, painting uh, with uh, natural dyes um, and uh, we conduct experiments on painting with uh, paints that are no longer used. Uh, success is uh, <clears throat> in, in this field is important because the traditional color commute significantly determines the high quality of the works which are repeatedly noted by experts, experts at various exhibitions. Over the years we have uh, searched uh, for ornaments, char characteristics of all parts of Georgia, which we, we use in our creations. We are still researching and searching for new forms, but this search led us to Julius Traume at his work, <clears throat> uh, as you know, in, 90, in 1899, the P Department of Agriculture under the Ministry of Trade and Industry of the Russian Empire established in Caucasian Craft Committee in Tbilisi which included the entire Caucasians and whose goal was to promote the rival uh, of various branches of folk crafts so they could become a source of additional income and profit for the state. Uh, the committee studied traditional com uh, compositions, ornamental uh, decor, weaving techniques, materials, weaving tools, um, led folk centers, uh, <clears throat> throughout the Caucasia, uh, for which uh, established uh, um, demonstration workshops, trained staff for these workshops. One of the most important directions of the committee was to supply the weavers with artistic sketches and technical diagram of the carpets. Uh, for this, in 1907, an art workshop headed by Julius Straume was created. Strauma's contribution to Georgia is great. The sketches that he created uh, are the important collection and kept in the Museum of Folk Crafts and Applied Arts. Strauma worked in Georgia until 1924. It was the work of uh, this important creator that led us to participate in the exhibition and festival in Riga in 2019 to 2022. In connection, uh, with the work of Julius Traume. So we prepared both uh, the <clears throat> report and uh, our works made with Georgian ornaments. We also created new works based on Straume sketches, which have not been put into life for so many years, both in Georgia and Latvia. Um, 
The generating force of our activity is tourism. In recent years, trends in uh, tourism products have been changed significantly. The modern visitor is more interested in local traditions, authenticity, and history of specific products. Uh, he, uh, they want to buy a tourism product based on sensations. Uh, for years, we have been creating accessories decorated uh, with traditional ornaments, but this time we decided to create a new product that combines the heritage of uh, nature and cultural heritage uh, that our geographical lo location gives us. Uh, in the uh, municipality of the Lopiskara, they are located Washlovani National uh, Park, um, you know, protected areas. Jajuna uh, Preserve and the Nature Monument Eagles Canyon. The increased interest of the tourists who came here to get to know the traditional handicrafts and culture more closely prompted us to offer tourist products uh, tailored to their needs. One of the most faithful chronicles of biodiversity is uh, traditional craft. The nature used in technique inspires motifs uh, to this day is a large and valuable part mo uh, of modern material art. In this case, uh, the source of uh, inspiration in our works is uh, the use of stylized forms of uh, endemic birds and plants around us. We have created more than men's and women's bags of different sizes, decorated with natural leather, small gifts, souvenirs, and rugs of different sizes. It is uh, a synthesis of traditional technology and modern style. Uh, the Biosphere Reserve was established in the Lopisvaro municipality, which uh, is mainly focused on uh, preservation of uh, intangible. Uh, intangible culture and natural heritage. This is UNESCO category and any product created uh, in this um, direction will undoubtedly be successful. Uh, art therapy is developing day by day and becoming more demand. Uh, one of the interesting aspects of art therapy is that people can express their emotions. Art therapy uses art to improve person's mental, physical, and emotional state. Environment <clears throat> and the creative process, interaction with colors, uh, symmetry of ornaments helps people to solve problems. Uh, they can manage their own behaviors, feelings, reduce stress, increase self-esteem and awareness. Uh, initially, we tested the effectiveness of our therapy on our themselves uh, during the pandemic. Each member created uh, a piece of um, you know, their um, um, artistic uh, rug and we created uh, and we stitched it together and we created the whole rug uh, which um, represented our feelings and uh, it was cohesive and uh, at the same time um, super artistic. Uh, so <clears throat> this means that the positive emotions we received during the creative process um, created a piece of art that is valued not only as an object Object, but also full of history and positive energy that comes with handmade items. As a final result, the product uh, implementation of healing methods through art therapy was created, uh, which will be offered uh, to representatives of different social and economic states, locals, and various interested parties. And finally, I hope that with the help of our project, we will introduce our creation to the general public, getting to know other people's culture and connecting with artists working in this field is vital for us. We will use the gained experience to develop the workshop to present it more on the world's market. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. It's uh, amazing to see you and your mother and hear uh, about uh, how she founded the project. Uh, and also to see how you work together on this project. 
um, it is a very inspiring work. It's so multidimensionary and cross-disciplinary, uh, bringing these elements of biocultural diversity to, to the forefront. Um, as we know, craft is so much connected to, to, the, to the environment as well and to, to the, um, the, the birds and the plants and the resources in the region <coughs> where, where craft um, uh, thrives. Um, yes. And it's also this aspect of the therapy that it's so important and that um, that people who work with crafts, they, they know what a healing process it is. How do we share this to the world, to the, to the rest of the world um, who also needs to find find ways to reconnect with themselves and uh, to find this joy um, uh, and the, the slowness to take time. Thank you so yes. much for, for your you. presentation. You. Now we will move on to another project that has a lot of soul um, and beauty and love in it, um, La Vigna in Capucine. Would you talk to us a little bit about what is localism and regenerational re relearning, uh, terms that you you use in your work, um, and what what role does do these these concepts play in your work? So by introducing your project, um, we will definitely understand more about these terms. Yes, hello everybody. So I'm going to share my screen. Do you all see my screen? Yes, okay. So um, I am Capucine Robert and I am going to introduce our project NALBA. So NALBA is a project of uh, handwoven wooden rugs inspired by regional forms of Transylvania. Uh, this project is supported by the European Funding Worth Project. <clears throat> we have a cross-national team Lavinia Gimbashan is a Romanian designer based in Denmark and Romania. She has uh, expertise in regenerative practices and storytelling. And uh, I am a French textile designer specialized in uh, the natural dyeing processes, concerned by the challenge challenges of the now nowadays textile industry. Uh, so um, our project started with the desire of um, working with a sustainable material, which is wool. Um, <clears throat> this fiber produced by the sheep uh, is an amazing material. It has many different properties and it's available in big quantities as there are 1 billion of sheep in the planet. Uh, we have uh, observed that wool is being wasted in Europe, uh, especially in, in our respective countries, France and uh, Romania. It uh, has lost its value and the wool manufacturers uh, closed. Um, through this project, we want to be part of the wool revival in Europe that is happening today by promoting wool produced in uh, Romania. We have observed uh, also the disastrous consequences of chemical dyes, uh, which pollute the environment and the rivers. So um, with this project, we are only working with the natural dyes. Um, and this process of natural dyes gives an amazing color to the wool. Um, to dye the wool, we only use um, plants, flowers, leaves, roots that we found locally. And uh, we use these resources with uh, awareness uh, by taking just what we need from nature. And we both believe um, um, that uh, uh, in practices uh, that are more connected to nature. Um, so the initial uh, idea of the project uh, is to design on ground and base our approach on field research. Um, we are inspired by uh, regional forms of Transylvania, traditional symbols and stories, landscapes and shapes. We 
observe the general generational gap uh, of uh, pursuing craft. So some crafts are being lost and we are grateful for, our, for people who taught us the hand weaving. And it's a way for us to reconnect, reconnect, reconnect sorry, with the past. Um, <clears throat> so, as I said, our approach is based uh, on field research. We practice the methodology of uh, working libraries. It's a concept invented by the artist Abigail Dawn. Uh, so, we explore the regional nature by uh, walking the land and uh, the craft by visiting museums. We discovered uh, different landscapes, animals and plants. Um, we explored the old crafts, uh, architecture, traditional textiles and patterns. And all this research constitute the foundation of our uh, designs. Thank you, Capustin. I will continue. Uh, I'm Lavinia, and Capustin already introduced me. So, uh, since you found out about our motivation and some of our methods, I'm going to go a bit more into that and what types of reflections we have been having over these past months. Somewhat we call it the knowledge harvesting because we, we've been gathering a different type of information from these fields that interest us. So we visited the shepherds and wool manufacturers that are not so many as it used to be before in Romania, but still they were very kind to welcome us and we are purchasing wool from them at the moment for our project. We have also visited the cotton factory, which is the only one left in Romania at the moment as well, with a way reduced capacity than it used to be. Then in terms of uh, weaving, as Capucin mentioned, we were very lucky with people's kindness to learn some basis of weaving so that we can start on by ourselves, given that none of us knew uh, have tried this before. So people are still using these techniques around Romania and Transylvania, both in small scale and big scale for us and small scale for uh, traditional costumes or um, decorative objects and so on. Uh, in these visits, we also came across museums such as textile museums where, where all this heritage, local heritage is being preserved. The village museum in Sibiu that is recreating the, the way people used to live in different regions of Romania before, um, along with the ecosystem at the sea, at the mountain, and then with the resources such as wool or um, cotton or different other local resources of those areas. Um, what we learned from this knowledge harvesting in general is that were the relationships between uh, how it seemed to have been before uh, and what it seems to be today. And this is something we keep on exploring and wanting to understand well, how did we transition and um, we could also see clearly how these fields we are working on and the craft is so much a reflection of the political, economical, social, and cultural event of the specific uh, area, Transylvania and also of Romania at large. And with that being said, we understood of this powerful, um, um, of the power that craft has to communicate almost like in an activistic way or in a sustain sustainable manner to communicate what people are going through, what a place is experiencing uh, craft has, as we learned before, regenerative and meditative uh, values. It's, it's a fuel as, as we, we saw. We can move on to the next slide, thank you. Besides of harvesting, we also wanted to gather and uh, because we wanted to learn more about the local ecosystem in terms of natural dyes. Uh, we, it was important we connected with local practitioners who know the soil and, and, and the plants here, even though Capucin has been doing a great deal of research uh, in France as well. But we decided to in, invite a few local practitioners to our garden in Brasov. 
and it was a great trust exercise because none of us knew each other and these people decided to join us and sleep here and and uh, engage with uh, wool and plants and really color together actively in the garden and uh, we think we continue to have a fruitful interaction with with these uh, two women uh, Anna and Elena we send seeds over the post and we, we uh, give each other advice and we think this is definitely one of the best parts we have experienced this community element and passing the knowledge without the fear of protecting it and being too individualistic in a sense about it but rather sharing it and growing it together yes <clears throat> another aspect which we have reflected on and saw rather soon in our research process um, analyzing the crafts, we came across the intangible, which we saw as this craft knowledge that has existed in people's lives before, uh, that was so daily, so embedded in their routines, so natural to them, that it almost seems that it, it belonged to them. It wasn't something outside of themselves. And these are some of the most truthful values we came across. Um, and today maybe we call them sustainability or slow making, we have terms for them, we have environment awareness and so on, but how it seems to have been, uh, it's, it's something that it's hard to touch, quantify or replicate. And it seems like one is able to do this only if they become the craft in a sense. And that's why we were inspired to do this uh, collage sketch that you see that craft is somehow a mirror of, of the person um, pursuing the craft and it's an extension of the identity of the body of what the person or the community is going through. Um, so we are again reflecting upon these things and the both the joy and how uh, challenging it could be to preserve and how important it is to have these discussions together and how do we carry this. It's, it's almost an invisible goal that we are not sure how exactly to, to hold. Yes. And then, <clears throat> in a sense, every interaction we came across brought us where we are. As I said, we were pretty much learning about Transylvania. Of course, I am Romanian and I have a history here, but I've also been abroad for 10 years. So it was a relearning for me to return here for Nalba. And for Capucine, it was a learning of our culture. And um, in a very simple way, we, we sketch, in a sense, the model or the methodology in which we think it happened to us, mostly planned and partly unplanned that we harvested and then we, we sat with it throughout the winter, which is something that made sense to the season after we collected everything that we set and designed and try to dissect what we collected and try to understand what stories are we putting forward to our objects, to our carpets. And pretty much we've given time to the research to sediment in us and then plant it again. And I think this is a model we seem to follow at the moment and which works for us. And on that note, we are of course thankful to every interaction we came across because it definitely moved us forward and widen our knowledge. And then I think I have one more slide, uh, which is hopefully um, a positive note from us, Nalba, um, with a simple sketch as well on where we think we are today, we are in the present and we question what does it mean to be two designers from different nationalities coming to build something locally and how we are still using mediums that are, as we call it, modern and we still use uh, technology. And we have this meeting right now on Zoom and we, we use different tools to draw and videos and uh, 3D graphics, but at the same time, as we search approaches to move to in a sustainable way to the future, in a, in a uh, caring way to the future, we often found 
explanations and wisdom in the past. And as obvious as that might be, it's just uh, also a reminder for us and a reflection on, on this loop we keep on doing on, on this arrow of time and also figuring out together, like, like in this conversation, how can we do that in the best way um, to ensure this continuity? So this is all from our side and thank you for, for having us. Thank you so much, Lavinia and Capucin, for your inspiring process and for sharing this process and your experiences, your learning journey with us. Um, as we all say at the Cultural Intellectual Property Rights Initiative and in the work we've been doing in the past five years, cultural sustainability is about complete immersion in a cultural context and understanding the reality. So we think in our view, you are excellent ambassadors of, of this concept, a concept that is now picking more and more ground in the in the global sustainability narratives and um, and having building these kind of relationships with with the with a place and with the ecosystems around it is something that will exponentially uh, change the way we coexist, the way we design, but it also at the same time places you in a position of being the new generation of craft custodians. Um, and, and these are new and hybrid forms that, that are formed right in, in with the tools and the realities that we have today. If maybe uh, 100 years ago, it would have been unimaginable for a designer from France to come and live uh, in Romania and explore these spaces together now this these are the realities that we work with and these are enriching the experience uh thank you so much for sharing and we will return with more questions uh for you as well um and last but not least we're moving on uh to to andrea who is part of a very complex ecosystem with a few different uh, uh, brands and projects that are also woven together um, uh, with the aim to integrate or, or maybe reintegrate, uh, if we can say so, repair, reuse and recycling in the, in the lifestyles of people today. Um, and especially uh, with experience of the Romanian cultural context, um, uh, it's it's a great honor to for us to meet you, Andrea, and to learn about your work. and And um, please share us uh, share with us now more about Redu and uh, and uh, my Bine. Thank you, Monica. Uh, my name is uh, Andrea Sofronia. I'm co-managing uh, designer and maker at Redu Atelier and uh, vice president of my Bina NGO from Romania. I uh, personally have a background in arts, theater and performing arts, and also uh, am a green social entrepreneur. Well, of course, I appreciate the diverse uh, professional and academic background. I also understand, uh, I can say, I understand uh, and have faced its challenges. So. My personal and professional experiences have led me to join the Redu team uh, from its first year of activity. Redu is a green social enterprise that aims to make a positive impact in the textile and fashion industry. Uh, with the support from the Norwegian government's Green Innovation and Industry Funding Program, Redu, Redu was launched in 2014. Uh, today, I'm a co-owner of Redu along alongside uh, with uh, my colleagues uh, who are also um, part of the MyBine team, uh, Elvis Sandu, Anka, Elena, Gerika, and uh, uh, Rus Viorica. Uh, that's the whole uh, Redu team. Just say MyBine's team is a, a, a bit bigger, but for now we stick to Redu. Uh, so at MyBine, because this uh, this name came, it's uh, the NGO that uh, is the mother NGO that uh, funded, um, launched Redu uh, back in 2014, uh, and uh, where I also started as a volunteer uh, over 14 years ago. So at Redu, uh, in the beginning, I worked as a facilitator for creative recycling uh, workshops, a seamstress, um, designer, maker, project manager, and on occasions, uh, trainer on human ecology workshops. At my Bine NGO and Redu, uh, we believe in a, in a holistic uh, approach to sustainability that considers the integration 
of nature, society, and economy prioritized in this order. So Redu has become uh, over the years a national reference in Romania for circular and social economy. Um, and it, it's, I think it's uh, within the first to, to tackle textile waste in an organized and entrepreneurial way. We offer concrete alternatives uh, and raise awareness about the hidden social and environment, environmental costs of the textile and fashion, uh, fast fashion industry. Also in 2022, we became, officially became a social enterprise and uh, we proudly opened our close to zero uh, waste shop, uh, close to zero waste uh, shop concept store uh, in Bistro Quib, which is another social enterprise of my Bina NGO. Uh, a little bit about, uh, about our work at Redu, we work with the post-industrial uh, pre and post-consumer textile waste. Uh, in the last three years, we focused a lot on the on the post-industrial waste from the textile and clothing factories uh, from Yash, uh, because being a small team, the post-consumer waste was a little too much for us uh, to manage. So um, post-industrial waste is um, refers to any textile waste generated during the manufacturing process uh, in uh, the production production process of textiles. Uh, we use scraps, uh, small pieces, a um, bit larger pieces, but since they're waste, uh, they're not so, so, so big. So we have uh, uh, in the presentation, these, these are our uh, most representative uh, pieces, the sweatshirts and the t-shirts with the trapeze. Uh, they were part of our first three fashion collections that we uh, that were designed by the Norwegian slow fashion designer Lisbeth Lovbakberg, and that uh, uh, these pieces stuck within our uh, all our collections, be it formal or non-formal. They you can still find in our in our workshop and concept store uh, these sweatshirts and t-shirts. We also offer a mending workshop at Redu to help community members uh, extend the life of their clothes that they already own. But also um, in our eight years activity, we, we run uh, workshops in which we uh, try to teach the community to how to sew and how to repair their own clothes. We always like to use a saying that's not yours, but we, we say it a lot. The most sustainable garment is the one you already own. So. Aside from our in-store products and clothing accessories, uh, uh, we also produce custom-made uh, products for small companies, more local companies, uh, also some corporate events, and we print, uh, uh, we offer print services or embroidery uh, and other design services as well. Over the years, we have um, worked a lot with the community, with the local community, and we have increased uh, our Redu community through hand, hands-on workshops uh, tradition, from traditional embroidery or make your own doll uh, workshop, uh, especially designed for children, uh, Christmas decorations, uh, upcycling workshops, uh, and uh, human ecology workshops, uh, flash mobs, uh, solidarity bazaars, and so on. Um, our goal was always to create um a collaborative learning experience with the with the community and always we wanted to value the bi-directional uh exchange of knowledge uh and knowledge and insights let's say because um we always strive to create an environment where everyone is everyone's perspectives and knowledge is respected and integrated and we we never um, did a workshop in which we came in front of the of the participants and said, "Yeah, we know how to do this, and we will teach you." Sometimes we had participants that uh, knew more about the topic than us, and we uh, we always worked together. 
And uh, because I mentioned earlier our close to zero waste shop, um, through it, we want to offer a um, sustainable consumption alternative to the local community uh, and engage, uh, engage with and support other social enterprises uh, in Romania. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you so much. Uh, that was amazing. There's so many um, components and different perspectives um, and uh, principles that you are uh, embodying in this work. Uh, it's very inspiring. Um, so all three of these incredible projects that we've just heard about are um, uh, multi so multidimensional and uh, pluridisciplinary. Um, community and craftsmanship are essential elements in all of these um, three projects uh, that are being expressed and manifested in different ways. Uh, so we are going to move on uh, to sharing a couple of or asking a couple of questions um, and sharing some information. So the questions are prompts, um, you know, for dialogue. If uh, anyone wants to, you know, uh, contribute anything to any of the answers, if anyone has any questions and want to put them in the chat, please feel free to do that. Um, and also feel free to raise your hand and get involved in the conversation. Um, so to commence uh, weaving some reflections on localism and the power of collaborative models, um, I wanted to ask you, Andrea, um, your focus on changing mindsets and behaviours, what do you think is the uh, biggest barrier when inspiring consumers to change their mindset and move from mass produced fashion to engaging with and valuing locally made products and going back to sustainable models of production, such as repairing and upcycling? Well, I don't, I, um, if I, I'm, I'm thinking about, about this question and um, the thing is that what is the word the the hardest thing to do is when you you have you have when you try to change some at a personal level you know that you because uh, the process is uh, like this and I'm talking uh, about myself but I've seen this process in in uh, in our community as well because we kind of started from uh, scrap. Um, change is really hard so you have to acknowledge that there is something not right i won't call it wrong but something is not right and it's not working so this process i think takes a lot and from my my perspective and how we we worked with our community was always with patience and um, of course the uh, all the all our our events and our interactions with the community has had this layer of um, awareness raising and uh, talking about the industry, talking about the impact that's not only on the environment, but that's also on, uh, it's a, it has a very big social impact. So I think the, this is the, the ground that we start building on because when, of course, the, Maybe 10 years ago, uh, when we did with my Bina the first uh, uh, workshops, creative workshops, um, uh, some terms were slow fashion, um, fair trade were, were new for, the, for this community. And now they're not so new. But in the beginning, you had to work with that and you always have to bring the social parts which nobody, when you, a lot of people start thinking about the environment because it, it's beginning to be visible with the climate, the climate change and, um, and all, but uh, when you start showing um, facts about what, what, what the workers have to go through, so you can buy, you can buy cheaper clothes that you don't know where, where they come from. So, I think this is, uh, there are a lot of layers, of course, um, maybe I'll to, because we are still a, a, a fashion brand, you know, and to, everybody likes to be, you know, to stand out with, with, the, um, with their, the way they dress. Um, I think um, 
yeah we like to always put the uniqueness of our of our accessories or clothes because they are one of a kind because we work with the uh, with waste so that's another thing that yeah i hope i no that's it's really interesting um because i mean uh, a decade ago or or and um uh, before that waste was something that was hidden you know if you're using waste in um or you know so-called waste in uh textile products it was kind of a a hidden thing um to consumers and now it is something that is uh celebrated it's marketed uh as a benefit for the the garment so it's amazing that that shift um has happened so yeah very interesting and it's also so interesting how, you know, weaving all these connections uh, with the experience of the fashion industry, but also when we look back at uh, the context, especially in Romania, the Romanian cultural context, uh, where growing up, um, the, the practice of not throwing any textile away has been so embedded in in my upbringing um, um I, I had the chance to also meet my great grandparents and it was from them that I had the first interactions with um, we can call them now traditional textiles but those were their textiles very contemporary at the time and how uh, this this uh, they were never perceived as waste none of the textile that was let's say left over was not waste it was all always used to make something else so from the same hemp that they were weaving and and making fabric from the same fabric they had their clothes but they had their bed sheets as well as the um the bags for keeping flour and other types of um uh grains you know that they were harvesting so this kind of relationship is somehow embedded um in in the in the local culture and not so of so not not so long ago uh, but it's still a difficult process to to relearn how we approach maybe the making uh, with our own hands will make that process more valuable when you see when you know how much you've invested the energy when you're closer to seeing the the uh, human investment and the energy investment then maybe uh, it, it it doesn't be become it's not called waste anymore uh, it becomes something else um, this takes me to the next question for Capucine and Lavinia. You've had um, your work so far is so, so research intense. Um, and, and that is very exciting for me because of the geekness um, I have into understanding the intangible. Um, how do you, of course, I think it's very difficult for you also to translate all the intangible know-how that you that you are um, collecting with your all your senses into the final product. But how do you how do you do that? How what is the challenge and how do you overcome it? How do you translate the intangible values into the products or or experiences that you want to create with Nalba? And what is your long term vision um, for Nalba? um into the next 50 years <laughs> we should begin obviously <laughs> um <clears throat> i think the question about um all this intangible knowledge um going into a product um we i think we talk we had um, a lot of reflection about it we talked to many different uh, craft people uh, also people working in the museum we had the chance to meet them and talk to them about that we also um, we collected a lot of information and we i think we took time to reflect uh, to analyze to analyze it to draw uh, because we we are designers so we had a um, methodology to uh, to to draw from uh, what we we learned and i think it's a non-linear process um it's a lot of uh, moving uh, moving forward and then going back um a lot of discussion and i think there were moments where we needed to explore a lot of different directions a lot of different shapes different colors uh, different comp composition and then moments where we needed to narrow down and uh, Made, made take took a direction, made choices, um, and draw again. 
a lot of uh, drawing. If I can add, it, I just think it, it's a nice story. We we were trying to interact with everyone we met and trying to be super curious about what they do. And there was this moment which I think stayed with the both of us when we met the shepherd on the hill and then we were just chatting and we asked him uh, what, how is he spending his days? Like, you know, because it seems uh, like something that it's fairly the same for someone coming from the outside with this uh, life that is going really fast. And, and then he was saying, like, what do you mean? I'm just walking up and down, you know? This is, this is it. I'm walking up and down the mountain, you know, with the sheep. And that, I think, strikes the most of us, how simple he explained his life and how we forgot about that. And we asked the obvious, in a way. And then I know Capucine took that sentence and really explored it and made imagine shepherds flying and shepherd bees like women shepherds and like going into all kinds of like more feminist topics and then coming back and I think it's really beautiful but also challenging to for us to be to define what are the stories we want to tell from what we have gathered because there are times when it's about harder topics like communism and then there are times when it's about grandparents love and then there are times on who are we as an identity in this world? And then like, oof, really a hard topics. And then eventually we went into this more naive drawing type where it's about hoping and dreaming. And I think, I believe we turned there with color and shapes and uh, using various mediums, like Apisin said, um, we took photographies and interviews and then we started drawing collages of the shapes we saw, whether it was a horse on a roof or a really traditional motifs we all recognize or which are common in many cultures. Um, so explore mediums, which is maybe more design related. Yes. Amazing. Oh, there um, was a second question, right? <laughs> um, the second question. The long-term vision for Narva, uh, yes. What is your long-term vision for Nalba? I think we are still figuring out um, because it was a lot of harvesting <laughs> in the past months. But uh, more tangible, we are on the verge to make our first rug prototypes and see how that comes out. And I think we hope that Nalba will continue to be, be its own entity and also, you know, get a clarity on intellectual property, speaking of, of this right now, and then moving into working with craftspeople. I think that it's, it's, this is a goal where people who know how to weave can, can help us and we could work together. It could also ease our, and, and fasten our processes together. We do one part and then the craftspeople together with us can, can teach us and help us to make these rugs. And I think we are thinking of limited collections in order to be able to keep this slowness of, of researching the land and the stories and the people, um, and then put it into these few rugs instead of mass production or big production. It wouldn't make sense, I think, to our values. Yes, definitely. And when you were speaking about that beautiful story about the shepherd, um, yeah, I had something similar with um, uh, someone from the Cypri network that I was connecting with. We were trying to arrange a time to have a meeting and they said, sorry, I can't meet at that time. I'm scheduled some time to be in nature. And I just thought like, wow, you know, that is something that we could all learn from. Um, but what you were just speaking about there, I just wanted to um, you know, ask a follow-up question uh, when you go from your research into your creation. Um, do you have um, a process of understanding the motifs and meanings um, of the cultural expressions that you reference uh, in your work and how do you combine them with inspiration from local biodiversity to create new outcomes? For now, we have used in terms of symbolism, um, if, if that's what you mean, so motifs that are, are local and that have been used over time 
whether in embroidery or in uh, rugs or other decorations, we um, we have used the how would I say the library um, of this uh, folk group that I've been part of in Brasov since I think I was eight, and my family they they are all part of this group. So they have this. And motifs which um, maybe is not so common. They managed to document a few motifs that they are using in their folk uh, group. And then some of them do have meaning, which of course touches us when you learn that what is the water symbol, which is one that we really love. And that is coming with storytelling and with, with these heavier values because we get the meaning of it. So we tend to choose the ones that are having your value. and try to use the ones that are coming from this source that managed to document them. And we it, it's documented for many years by them. And we always mention them in, in, in the places in which we are reusing these uh, symbols. And then, yes, it's, it's about iteration, like um, figuring out how much we iterate or we don't iterate and what's our role there. Um, as you said, how we combine it with other other elements and animals we, we see around. And I think uh, we've been doing both, both iterating and taking uh, some as, as they were. Yes. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, as a as a textile print designer in the commercial fashion industry, it's so it's so refreshing to hear about that that kind of process that uh, tra would translate well. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I just wanted to um, you know, jump in and ask uh, Nino about the, um, in your case, um, you're working simultaneously on a process of ensuring um, the cultural continuity of traditional uh, Georgian rug weaving um, and the creation of contemporary textile expressions like products um, that incorporate textiles uh, woven. Um, what is the main challenge in sustaining the dual process? Uh, so sustaining these products uh, starts from the root, uh, the wool thread making. There is only one place that makes the, this wool. And so after, throughout the years, it has been um, increasing the prices. So our base product uh, is also increasing. So uh, we cannot also mass product these um, handicrafts. Uh, also the um, finding and uh, uh, creating all the natural dyes is also a long process. So it gives us um, um, a lot of challenges because during the winter time there's a not not um, so much um, colors or plants that we can harvest and during the um, it, it's so it's basically it's a um, cold period of our um, workshop. So we are trying to um, harvest as much as we can. So we dye it throughout the summertime. Uh, we harvest the uh, plants during the spring and uh, um, autumn time. Uh, and we create these and also the um, uh, knowledge like throughout the people or throughout the Georgia, this is the only place that makes this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, like um, a lot of people know about us, but still um, um, like people mistake it uh, to the um, other things um, such as um, what, uh, the felting technique. Uh, so uh, yeah, it, it like it, at the exhibitions that there's uh, not much of a uh, knowledge and people mistake it to a felting. Um, we try to uh, establish ourselves throughout the country like massively and yes, like 
especially the products can be really expensive and people uh, like can't afford um, it as much as like we'd like to. And we can't lower the prices as well because it's then there's no value to that. So yes. Yes, amazing. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. It's um, it's so interesting. Those um, you know processes and um, ideas and considerations that aren't uh, typically part of uh, you know, commercial designing um, that a lot of people are are used to learning about and used to understanding. So um, it, there's there's a lot of things that um, you know resonate in terms of like the processes of make you know of making a product, but then there's so many more um levels of of consideration and uh and meaning and um and locality that come into it uh and it's just really really exciting to see um how they are considered uh and because it, and the way that they relate to commercial processes because it means that there is a way for them to perhaps um, replace those commercial processes for uh, you know, more sustainable ways of working um, that everybody can engage in and enjoy and understand themselves and their community and respect for other people's selves and community. So that's really great. Yes. Thank you. Andrea, uh, and, um, and ask her, um, you're working in, in a complex ecosystem of initiatives. Um, and this is something very interesting, working with this complexity to bring about um, uh, uh, the focus on, on a, a change of mind shifts. So how you have a physical shop, you have an educational component, you have um, a whole community um, um, that you engage with. What are the advantages, but also the challenges of working in this manner? And uh, we're working or, or we're insisting on this topic of, of unpacking complexity, because like we saw for Nino and Elena as well, um, um, they also have this challenge of um, creating, let's say, uh, or reaching a, a, a modern consumer, but at the same time keeping the focus on on reviving the process of of and and keeping alive the 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 traditional process of weaving the rugs. That's also another form of complexity. How is your you are working with complexity um, um, uh, helping you to achieve the the change of mind shift that you want? Well, this is a very difficult to answer <laughs> to answer a question uh, i don't know exactly uh, i don't think i have a recipe or, or any of uh, of my of my colleagues we don't have a, a certain recipe for it i think we always um cuz there are challenges and opportunities and everything you find in any uh, conventional type of entity from business to ngo to uh, whatever you have your challenges and um for us i think it was good and we and everything was uh built upon how we felt things should uh, uh get contour <laughs> in for a specific uh, moment so uh awareness rising was was uh, necessary for the people to understand uh the the industry the facts the uh, environmental and social problems, as I mentioned. So awareness, uh, it's a must. <laughs> they need to understand. They need to uh, to be to be. I, I don't know to be there in a way. You, you can because they are customers also. So you are all. We are also an NGO, but we have to uh, social enterprises because we need to be sustainable and be alive. Uh, as an NGO in Romania, because we want to help changing things to a better, <laughs> to a, a better path. So I don't know. Maybe I'm very chaotic in my answering, but it's uh, overall everything sums up to a good team, and to we're also close friends. We're a small team. We know about each other's challenges. Some are better doing some things others are better at doing so we are very complementary and i think this is the core the sharing a mission 
and being human to one another. I think that's the core that uh, uh, sets aside or resolves any challenge, any anything. No, I think I also put a very complicated question because this is the kind of complexity all of us here have to face to face every day. And uh, this was also a goal of bringing together this panel uh, to try to find what are the common points, uh, because so oftentimes in all these 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 platforms that speak about sustainability, they 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 put them separately, sustainability in fashion, localism or, or regenerative practices, um, intangible cultural heritage and culture, they, they tend to still be separate, when in fact, we see we're all in the same space, and we we face the same complexities, we face the same challenges. And I think they're all the projects uh, here in this in this room right now in the space and many other in our communities, they all have to navigate these different um, let's like a um, like the antennas of <laughs> uh, of a, of a complex creature, we have to navigate the 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 economic reality we have to to keep close to our values make sure we express them and we need to be sensitive in that sense the sensitivity sensitive to the people around us to the reality around us and to to the other connections that we can form to to strengthen the ecosystem so your question your answer is is excellent because um we are here to unpack together the, these complexities and make sure we we create bridges in such a way that our joint efforts are are stronger um exponentially that are than our individual ones um so i put you on the spot there very <laughs> <laughs> in a in a not very gentle way but for a for a for a for a bigger uh, purpose thank you so much andrea for sharing this and so honestly sharing um the the challenges and and how you overcome them um to kind of um um wrap up the complexity of issues that we um we talked about here um elena and nino i would like to ask you to share um so you have a you have such a such a uh, an in-depth relationship with the craft and you mentioned um all the benefits that uh, a project like yours and the way you interact with the community um uh, by creating pro products but by also connecting people in in ways that becomes healing and therapeutic can you can you sum up for us um the benefits uh, for society and and for the people of being connected to a craft like the um the the weaving techniques in your region but i think it applies to any 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 textile craft in the world um so one well, one main point is to gather all, all the people and um we want we don't want to uh, this craft making to be not forgotten uh, and we want to uh, more mm, like spread the um, mm, uh, spread the word about it and, and it's healing for people uh, it's all natural and uh, it can uh, be beneficial for your health as well uh, and the main point is that the wool uh, is uh, is being thrown away. So, um, in a way, we try to help the world uh, and also um, the people who make who makes this kind of uh, things, like the wool, wool woolen things, and we um, also uh, help our uh, economic. Uh, inside the, the country and uh, like yeah establishing as it is as it was because uh, the Soviet Union hit us really hard and we're trying to bring it back and gather all the these women um, and um, recreate the tradition of the socializing uh, between each other so that is the main point of our workshop and our um, craftsmanship. And yes, I think it's more like uh, therapeutic for us as well. And we're really happy uh, to follow this um, 
our ancestor steps. So, yeah, thank you. It's beautiful how you speak about uh, about following into the steps of your ancestors and uh, this such intimate connection with with the the, the weaving craft in your region um, and also how the sitting together how important it is. We we saw also um, throughout the cultural IP month more at the beginning of the month we had um, stories from the Republic of Moldova where where women are embroidering together in what uh, we call in Romanian language Shizator, and it seems uh, that we discover in different regions of the world that this act of collective creation uh, present um, traditionally in communities, but uh, present also in the modern, um, let's say, urban context where we can create uh, together um, and, and, and bring back these connections or this, these, these ways of um, taking decisions collectively and, and creating collectively. On this note, um, before we close up this meeting, um, we had one, one more question uh, for all of you, the same question for all of you. Um, uh, if, if clearly there's a, there's a gravitation in the, uh, in the whole international uh, um, um, narrative on sustainability in fashion towards uh, drawing inspiration from the past and looking at regenerative practices and this inspiration in a way from the past um, is multifaceted as we saw in this panel. Uh, so it can be, um, you know, um, not looking at textile as waste and, and recycling as a way of lifestyle, as a way of bringing value. It can be on focusing on a specific craft and extracting what that kind of a relationship with, with a certain process and product can, can bring in the life of the people, but it can be also immersing in a community and, and trying to bring out learnings that are either through products, through storytelling. So there's a wealth of, 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 ways of engagement but de definitely in this process um we all face set challenges and um there's there's no clear way of of knowing of or or getting support uh right uh how do we do it what is exactly the the models in which we can work so if you could ask right now governments, international organizations, or fashion industry actors, consumers, the public at large, anyone, uh, for one thing, to help support the kind of work we all do, all of us uh, do, um, and, and a, a means of supporting in the future, what would that thing be? If I can uh, share a thought, um, <clears throat> I think I have, you know, it's like the golden fish. I will, I want to ask three things, not just one. But <laughs> now, now I'm being greedy. But um, I think we discussed with with uh, the people we've met and people from this uh, industries how, for example, rule alone is missing the chain, the ecosystem. Um, so that could be one question alone um, on how do we educate or make the shepherds aware how they need to carry the sheep uh, on the fields so that the wool that is being made is good to be processed and then how do we help the people who have manufacturers to process this wool um, in, in good conditions, in, in faster processes, so like some kind of support and again creating awareness then afterwards to, I don't know, children and to, to ask practitioners how, how to use these resources and it, I, I think it's such a complex topic and then it goes back to who wants to buy the wool and <laughs> is, it, is it exciting to buy this local wool? But, um, we notice this disconnection just about wool alone, where um, the shepherd don't know about the producer, and the producer cannot find the shepherd, and us needing the wool, uh, don't know where to buy it. And it seems like there is a disruption um, no system for it, at least around Romania, it seems like that. Thank you. Um, who wants to answer next? 
And so I would like, to, we would like to ask um, uh, them that uh, how can they um, promote or help us um, to create more of these kind of workshops uh, that can help uh, to, as Lavinia said, getting the chain uh, to create more of the sustainable and slow fashion. So, yes, and upcycling things. Uh, and yes, that, that would be my question for them. How can they help or promote uh, the traditional crafts and create more workshops and uh, spread the knowledge about the uh, weaving or, or, or dyeing in natural colors and so on and so forth. So, yes. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I think I will just add that uh, to me, the main challenge is to to create awareness about uh, our um, clothes, about our consumption, and to give value to what we already have, to what we buy. So it's a total mindset that has to change. And it's, uh, we can do that on an individual level. And it's, um, to me, that's the most important things uh, is to give value to, to each clothes or to each uh, textile that we have because it, or it's already so much work and we are used to buy that uh, super cheap and super uh, badly made so um, it would be about this awareness of uh, the value of each uh, textile absolutely andrea what are your thoughts on the question well, <laughs> I think I would, and this is in this moment, what, what comes to mind is that I would ask <laughs> for a, a little bit more support for the uh, social enterprises and uh, tax support benefits um, and any, any kind of, uh, of help because now it's, it's just the name mostly and the fact that you uh, most of your profit you have to re reinvest it in another social entity or in yourself so I think I would I would ask for that <laughs> uh, because it's needed and I know they're not they're not a focus because usually in Romania for now social enterprises are small businesses they are not big large companies that but they are still um, a very um, I don't know, human, not uh, evil economics, you know, um, large companies that take up everything. So they usually preserve some, some things, social enterprises, and also help uh, the insertion ones also help uh, uh, vulnerable people to get uh, integrated into the work life. So, yeah, I would, I would ask, I would ask them to keep to bring some focus into this area. That's an excellent call for action, Andrea. And like, like it also comes out for, from your answers and what we also feel uh, we need uh, visibility and awareness, understanding of the kind of work done and the processes that it involves, the benefits of those processes and of this work for the entire society. We need money to be able to do this work. So a distribution of resources towards this type of project, um, uh, towards this type of, let's say, hybrid hybrid organizations that are not really um, uh, compatible with, with the, not even compatible with the startup mentality that seems to dominate the landscape and the understanding. So the processes in, in the spaces we work are so much slower than what the tech industry is going through. Of course, you cannot apply the same framework. Um, we need to, to have frameworks designed to sustain and nurture this kind of work and to have the financial resources directed in, 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 in the proper way so that we can access those funds and continue doing the work we do. 
what we see, and, and it's five years of the Cultural Intellectual Property Rights Initiative this year, throughout this time, we met so many incredible people, amazing people doing work that has always, always been inspiring and, and, and profoundly changing. Um, and another thing that we saw in this uh, process is that all these people are monuments of of passion inspiration and resilience um and we are maybe in a critical time um in 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 shaping the way the system should look like so that it are uh, it is made for for the needs of all these people people who work also with vulnerable communities people who work with communities that have a different worldview and a worldview that only enriches uh, the the existing um, um, social cultural rules and and, um, and 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 is bringing a very big uh, social cultural benefit at the same time. So for us, it's been an honor to have this call with you today and to start weaving these relationships uh, to to start um, uh, taking also um, you know global action or speaking in contexts where we can we can maybe have um, um, or contribute to to creating that system that that is designed to support uh, the work we do um, fully and not only tangentially or grabbing bits and pieces uh, here and there. Nicole, uh, any closing remarks um, from your side? I'm just so inspired, basically. And I think that's, I think that is one of the main um, uh, things that, you know, all of these conversations can do. You can't, can't tell people to do a new process. You can't tell people to want to change. I think it's in, about inspiring people. And um, as someone who works in the commercial fashion industry, um, in, in, in academia, where there's, you know, a lot of obvious like systemic problems, um, all of these uh, projects are just the most exciting, um, like ex exciting, inspirational, like shining glimmers of, of hope. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you for sharing them. And I look forward to um, you know, learning more about them and um, keeping up with how they evolve um, and uh, just you know, being part of this network with you all. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attendance. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. <laughs> thank you for being part of this amazing conversation. Um, we look forward to many more conversations um, and connections uh, going forward. So please reach out to us with any updates on anything that you're working on. Um, and you, you know where to find us. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.